Hi there. Thank you so much for joining me today on Finding Happy Podcast. I am Satin Brownie, and I'm so happy to be here with you today. Uh, it's a rainy day where I am. I love the rainy weather. It's my absolute favorite. And um, so the place is pretty cool. And I can see the trees, and it's just gorgeous. And um, I'm just embracing this newness, this new day, because with a new day comes new opportunities, new experiences, you know, and... Um, change is not such a bad thing it's 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 actually a positive thing you know it's a it's a positive thing and so i i am embracing my new day <laughs> um today i want to i want to engage in a conversation about the journey to discovering your life your life's purpose or your life purpose and so I would like to first ask you three questions. You can leave the answer in the comment section or you can just think about it, right? And the first question is, have you found you're happy? What in your life brings you to your place of mental peace? That's number two. And number three, what is your place of refuge? when life's turbulences hit. Some questions to think about. Happiness, you see, or at least in my opinion and from my observation, is greatly underrated. I think happiness is severely underrated. There can be no peace of mind. There can be no peace in your life without first achieving contentment and peace of mind we spend thousands of dollars and countless hours on our physical parents but many ignore the perils of the mind we become so loyal to external influences that neglecting our own internal consciousness and core becomes second nature this leaves us vulnerable to negative outcomes which can have a troubling impact on our mental well-being and quality of life. For example, lack of self-discovery. Some of us do not know who we are beyond writing our name, writing our own name on a form or introducing ourselves to someone we've met. We are so heavily influenced by external information that unless we seek therapy, coaching, or counseling, we may never effectively tap into our deeper selves. And it's true, I've experienced it. This results in us not knowing who we truly are, oblivious to our life purpose, or worse, lack of self-concept. Then there is the career misfits, or the career misfit. According to Gallup 2018, a staggering 87% of employees worldwide are not engaged in their work, not happy in their work. The company which has 30 years of research with more than 30 million employees reports that companies with highly engaged workforces outperform their peers by 147% in earnings per share. Let's connect our personal self with that. It means that, at least it means to me that, when I'm happy, I have a greater chance of increasing my income. Think about that, yeah? Then there is mental illness. Across the globe, there is a fight, there is a problem of mental, il il mental illness, right? I remember reading um, a report from the World Health Organization that said that in tw by 2020, one out of four persons will suffer from, I think it was either a mental health um, illness or depression. That's staggering. Th that's that's, that's mind-boggling. We've got to stop and take note. In Jamaica, reportedly, there's a mental health epidemic. At least that's what the reports are saying. 
professionals in the field have expressed their worries. Between 2011 and 2018, headlines such as Mad in Jamaica, Mental Alert, Mental Emergency, Mental Illness Worry, Schizophrenia in Jamaica, and Depression Affect 1 in 10 Jamaicans, among others, frequented the local papers. That is something, isn't it? That is something. Today, we're going to be speaking with a very special person. Her name is Kisha Palmer. She's been a teacher for almost two decades, and she's, now a, she's also a trained paralegal. Kisha has served her country. However, she is currently considering a career transition, a career change. So we're going to have this conversation with her to see, to learn about her and also to share her story and to learn from her story um, so that we can support her as well as we can learn from her. So let's welcome Kisha. Welcome Kisha. Thank you so much for having me. The journey to discovering your life purpose. Okay. That's the topic we're going to have the conversation around. Yes. Um, for some of us, this, well, for everyone, the life purpose is a discovery, <laughs> right? Right. And mm -hmm. we know what people go through. If you've ever watched a National Ge Geographic um, program, you know what it takes to, to have a successful discovery. It takes yes. time, it takes investment, it takes the work. Yes. Some digging, right? Research. And unearthing and research. Yeah, mm -hmm. there we go. So um, while some persons may think it's easy to just figure out who you are, it's not mm -hmm. so easy because you didn't create yourself. <laughs> mm -hmm. We didn't create ourselves. And so we have to spend the time or take the time to get to understand. And that's why I have this podcast called Finding Happy, because this is me finding mine. <laughs> so I engage in conversations with persons like yourself um, who are able to speak their truth, own their truth and speak it. So we can have an honest conversation for a change, because I think there is a need for honest conversation. Honestly. Yes, honest conversation about life, life advancement, and the things that matter. I, um, the podcast, let me give you a little background about what it really is about. The podcast is really about finding one's happiness, finding one's place of peace, contentment, whatever happiness means to anyone. I call it finding happy because I believe that after becoming a coach, and, and, and finding my own healing, I realized that we look for everything else and we call it so many things, but we never call it happy. Why? When happiness is perhaps the most important thing, we're supposed to be happy. That's the journey. Yes. But oftentimes we don't really talk about it that way, do we? We say find a career or find work to do or find something to do, but we, we never connect it back to what makes us feel good so go ahead yes i i think that it stems from our parenting and ancestors because they're used to being taught to get up get a job be industrious for the females get married but nobody was teaching them to be happy That's and so true. it's passed down to you as a child mm -hmm. and you just figured out you know what I go to school up until college university and I get a job yes. check I did that <laughs> next thing I should do I should get married check. check you did that and some persons may never do it and they're like oh my god what am I gonna do well, I, yeah. I, didn't get I didn't get married and everybody else is having kids I exactly. didn't do it and sometimes the person who's sitting there saying oh my god I didn't do this don't even want it no that's the thing and a lot of persons don't want it they don't desire it and i love to hear when females would say i have one child i don't want it anymore because it's hard to raise one human being much more 10 i really don't know how persons do it oh, going five going 10 they're crazy as far as i'm concerned it's, 
<laughs> it's madness. Or it's maybe madness. they're happy having happy sex. <laughs> maybe. But the consequences because of that. The consequences, sex, a right? Lot of kids. Yes. And I think sometimes, I think sometimes sex becomes the happy we, we find mm -hmm. because we didn't really go searching. So we land up on sex and it's lovely and it's good and it gives you this orgasm that takes you to this happy place for a moment. And we keep mm -hmm. wanting to recreate that. And I think that's because that is why drugs are successful that people are taking them. It's that, it's that high that we get to. How do we cultivate our lives that we live that high in the positive things that we do? That is what finding happy is about. And that's what our conversation is going to be about. Well, if I could answer that question. Yes, For me, it came through pain. Mm. Yes. Discovery. I, I like to discover. Always curious. When I was a child. Inquisitive. <laughs> And when I realized that certain things were not happening for me, I wondered why. And I went on a, a path every year, especially at my birthday. I'm always trying to improve on myself during that time. So the pain that I was going through, didn't like it. Nobody likes pain. And I got tired of feeling a certain way and tired of being in a certain environment. So the journey began or continued on seeking happiness and seeking help, you know, because you want the pleasure, you want the consistent happiness. You don't want a high, as you refer to as a drugs or a sex. Or... So the journey for happiness is something that I always sought in the last couple of years. Because I was miserable. Wow. Miserable, unhappy. Things are not working out the way I wanted to. It's not happening. And uh, through coaching... You, you helped me with coaching, and that was eye-opening, aha moments, hard. <laughs> it's the hardest thing I had to do wow. to dive deep into everything that's going on, good or bad, and to see yourself. Good thing about it is that I'm always open to that, even though sometimes I may were. react to um, criticism or you know and that's a natural thing and it's a good thing yes yes mm -hmm. but I, I i love the fact that i want to push through mm -hmm. and go to the next side you know yes we've dived right into talking about you searching seeking your happy i'm going to take you back a little a little back to learn a little bit more about you um you've been a teacher for yes. almost two decades. And let me share something <laughs> with you, okay? I have never <laughs> committed to anything outside so of my own life <laughs> for two decades, okay? Congratulations. Oh Congratulations. I've never, I remember the last job I had, <laughs> I made a promise to myself and I said to myself, You've got to stay here for two years. Wow, because, two years. <laughs> yes, because people kept, interviewers kept saying, but you only stay there for a year and something. And I said, okay, I need to go two years. And I'm telling you, it was a task. It was a task wow. staying and remaining for two years. And I stayed for, for four. And wow. I, yeah, I'm so That's proud of good. myself. <laughs> I'm Double. so proud of myself, right? So you've served your country as a teacher for 17 years or over 17 years, right? This is a 17th year. Right. Mm -hmm. How did you become a teacher in Jamaica and what was the journey that led you to that decision? Okay. Childhood dream is to be a lawyer. That was it from the moment I started watching Perry Mason. <laughs> love, love, love Perry Mason, love Perry Mason, the black and white TV, and uh, love to talk, love to ask questions. But I was discouraged from doing that by my parents, you know, saying that lawyers to lies. <laughs> you my dad did that. that to me too. I wanted to become <laughs> a lawyer, and he said, lawyers are liars. I changed. <laughs> <laughs> so unfortunately, I listened to them. Because I, I, I regret it. I wish I had 
more clear view of who I was. So, you know, when I decide to do something, I just do it. You understand? I, I commit to it. So everybody else is going to college, right? And I did not want to be at home, so I just applied to college. That was it. Yeah. And I ended up at Bethlehem Children's College doing something that I didn't like, home economics. I don't like cooking. And I ended up doing that. And uh, got a job at my mom's workplace. After I um, sending out applications all over the place, nowhere. I didn't get a job anywhere else. Right in Christiana, which is close to me. And so that's how I began teaching. I started there September 2001. And it became normal. Wow, normal. What's yes. A choice of words. You just do it. It's normal yeah. until it became a pain. Yeah. Abnormal because I just could not relate to the behavior of the, the school culture because it wasn't what I was used to. I went to Knox. I was raised a different way and I just didn't, I couldn't relate. And I stuck it out. Year 10, I'm still there. But um, something broke. I think 2015, 2016, it's like I just had enough. Like I started to crumble under the pressure wow. of being there. What was that like for you? Take us through your crum crumbling and the experience. What started you know, happening? That, that came to my mind a while ago was a cake. When you bake a cake wow. and you don't put the ingredients in, and when you put the, pull the cake out of the oven and it crumbles and it sink because the foundation was just not right. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I just became unhappy with my job because I wasn't feeling purposeful. Oh my God, I'm getting emotional. I'm so sorry. <laughs> We've spoken before. But it's the there first time no you describe it that way. Wow. Yeah. No purpose. I felt useless. I did not matter to my students. That's how I felt. I'm sure I affected change in a small amount. But majority, they could not careless what I had to say it was not just a paycheck anymore it was like it felt like I'm dying I literally felt like my life was wasting away I would come home and just be wasting away like sitting down and wondering what am I doing I am more valuable than this I have more to offer why am I wasting my time with these people sorry that's how I felt that's why okay. am I here why am I wasting my time why am I going through this ridicule mockering the abuse the verbal abuse from students and i reacted to their behavior negatively too i'm not gonna lie like i reacted to their behavior i did I, up to this i think i'm i, I learned better now with coaching thank god <laughs> how i could relate to these kids better i'm being on leave i've been doing such a you know spiritual introspect of my life and I'm calmer now <laughs> but I remember I, last week or two weeks ago I was in the town and I saw a few of them and I had a meltdown wow I went home and I'm like I was like it's like PTSD or something <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, wow oh my god because I remember the hell that they, that they they put you through in the classroom a lot of persons they don't think about teachers and the mental health and the toll it takes on you you know, I remember when I wrote my letter to get my vacation leave last year, I outlined everything in that letter that I was cracking under pressure. I basically told my, um, their interference, I basically told my principal that I'm not fit to be in the classroom mm -hmm. right now. And I was denied the leave. And I was so not prepared to go back to work. I remember the first day of school, I was like, I didn't buy nothing <laughs> to go back, but one pair of shoes. I'm like, I don't want to be here. I can't go on to the next question until I address it. You, you, you drew an illustration, and I think it was so powerful that I think we need to think on it a little more for the one person that may be listening to this that can. Mm -hmm. It felt like a cake that you put inside the oven with the insufficient ingredient, and it came out, and it just broke up. Mm-hmm. I got so emotional because I could see the cake. 
Mm-hmm. When you said the cake, let me tell you what I saw. I saw you open an oven, <laughs> a, a round chocolate cake. It had nothing on it. It was just on like a platter. You take it out and it just sick. Yeah, it's crack it, cracking. Yes. And yeah. the first thought that came to my mind is, how did your environment respond to your breaking? Well, um, it wasn't n- nice. My, my supervisors, um, when I went, when I ended up in the, <laughs> in the VP office or principal office for something, they couldn't see that it was a deeper problem underneath all of that. Because normally I do my job and I do it well. The task, I would do it. I have no issues. But when a conflict arises, when I'm not handling things well and I ask for help of my supervisors, it would be my fault, basically. You know, you're not doing your job. I've been told that many times on my supervisor. You don't do your job. You're not doing. You're not. You're not doing a job. And I remember the last time. I've been there 17 years, and I've never walked out of a classroom um, back to back in one day. It never, and it happened that day. I just could not deal with it. The disrespect from students, you know. And I was there in the office, and I'm like. I can't take it. And she's like, you didn't do your job. I, you know, you didn't do your job. So if, even if you go home today, you're not going to get paid for today. But she's not seeing that I was, I was in need of help. Like, would you rather okay. me stay there? Because yes. in the past, I would stay there and I would cuss and yeah. I'll be in more trouble in the past. And I'd be written up by, by a principal or VP or whatever, a student. And, but I chose to walk away, which is smart on my part. Instead of staying there and battling the adversity in my classroom, I left. And I still was, you know, slapped over my shoulder like I didn't do my job. While you're and crying I, out for help, pretty much. Yeah, but my friends, my friends saw that and they understood because they go through the same thing. Mm-hmm. It's a daily battle, a daily task. Do you think it's a case where the principal or the person you're turning to for help or with the hope that they would at least see your cry don't have the relevant skill set sure they they don't yeah they don't and i think that mm -hmm. sorry yes go ahead i think that as a principal or vice principal or anybody in leadership position you should be taught or coached on how to behave sensitivity to your employees your colleagues must be in the environment, the work environment. I remember when I was doing my course on, in paralegal studies with, with, with your school, Mac Project, and they talk about employment law, and I could not believe how they treated the employees. I like, I wanted to move to wherever they were teaching that. They were so sensitive, and they had the rules written out. If you didn't follow the rules, they had steps, and they were sensitive to your need. They did not push you away and say, go do your job. Mm-hmm. Or I was told to find another job. Wow. Right? And I've been there for, de- for over a decade, and this is how you treat me. How, when you think about that, and think about the fact that here I am in a job I didn't love anyway in the first place, mm-hmm. but I've committed myself to. Mm-hmm. And with that comes all of this when I didn't even, this is not even something that brings me the joy. Mm-hmm. Or the healing that I need in the first place, but I have committed. Mm-hmm. Does that feel like a double whammy to you? Yeah, mm-hmm. it is. Yes. yes. Because it's easy to say, let me quit. It's easy to say, let me just find another job. You know, but I had to stay in there for, for different reasons. Because there are other things at stake, right? Other things at stake. So I, I wasn't going to just say, you know, let me quit. But I, I actually was going to quit two years ago. I was going to quit. I was desperate. I was desperate. If I could get in somebody's suitcase and fly off to another country, that is how desperate I was. I wanted to leave. And my friends and family were like, no, stick it in, stick it in. You have two years left until this, stick it in. Because, yeah, to be there so long and not get my benefits, you know, so 
it's almost like there's no exit strategy that works mm -hmm. in your favor. Right, right. I'm sorry you went through the painting. Yeah, me too. It was hard, but I think that there was a, there's a purpose for me going through all of that, as anybody's story. For you to go through your pain, there's a reason. There has to be a reason. Because one day you're going to be able to help somebody else. You're going through the life, and when you're young, you have adults who helped you. You get older, people help you along the way. You get older, and you help somebody else who's younger than you, or the same age, or older than you. We're supposed to pass it on until we die. Yeah. You can't just come through the world and just <laughs> don't help anybody. <laughs> what did you learn? What did you learn when, when it's at the school of life? What did you learn? You know, so you fight through your, your battles and you fight and you help somebody else fight theirs. Yes. yes. Yeah. Now that you are considering this change in this, yes. that spoke about, what are the steps that you're taking? I, use, I, use, I like calling it the career that heals you, the work that heals you. I love that, the work that heals you. <laughs> yes. yes, I love that question. Because as I said before, law was my thing, right? Mm -hmm. And I did coaching with you and you knew law is my thing. <laughs> and I remember the last session that we did and I'm, I'm thinking, because I've been working so hard and so long that I'm tired, exhausted. And I don't want to go to another career where I'm going to be up at the crack of dawn and I go to bed at the crack of dawn. I, wanted, I want a career that allows me to set my own hours in a sense where I go in and I help. I must be helping. I must feel useful and purposeful. And even though I, I love law, I still love it, there was a, something missing. You know, it wasn't a hundred percent there. I was like questioning it still. And so I realized that I didn't consult my maker, <laughs> you know, about it. And so I still had questions. I still was just wondering, could I be purposeful in that field? Could that field bring glory to God? So I went to church. <laughs> I went to church, I went to fasting service, and on the way, my friend asked me, he's like, Miss P, what do you think about guidance and counseling? And I'm like, what? No. No. Mm -mm. I want to be a lawyer. You know that already. <laughs> and he didn't say anything. And I went to the, inside the service. We're there, and they were giving offering. And the ministers said that we should come up with their offering. But while they were giving the offering, they were giving prophetic word to each person. And I just got up and went in front of one of my other friends and said, I'm going before you. And I went and she said, I see you in the classroom as a guidance counselor. Go do that. That's what God said you should do. Do what you need to do and go do that. And I'm like, okay. And I went back down and I smiled at my other friend because he just said it to me a while ago. And I'm like, okay, cool, cool. Let's see how I'll work with this. And I started researching that. And when I found the school that I thought that I would, you know, like, I felt peace with it. Wow. Yes. I was not confused about it anymore. Wow. I felt peace with that decision. Mm -hmm. And I started planning towards that decision. Yes. That's mm -hmm. powerful. And um, when you think about it, you know, and what I often say to my clients, like when they say they, want, they have to do the work to really find out if you know what they call lawyers? What? Counselors. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Legal. Yeah. Counselor. Yeah. Counselor. <laughs> so sometimes, so, so that's why sometimes even co coaching, you see where even though you say one thing, we still seek to approach it without a label. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so for at your, your, um, inform with the information you're having, law is it. Sometimes once you broaden your scope, search who you are and you, you get to find out that, oh, okay. It's the cousin to what I was thinking, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and then you find yourself autumn. Mm -hmm. So I am proud of where you are because yes. I know the work Thank that you. it took and I know the time that you had to be given to 
right? Yeah. <laughs> so that's very good. That's very good. And see, you'd have had, you'd have already had so much experience in the classroom, right? Yes. And so we could even dare to say you're now an expert into the issues mm-hmm. that the school faces, not just with the church as well, mm-hmm. right? And do you think perhaps the solution you were looking for from others is what you were supposed to bring? Yeah. <laughs> Right. So that's why you're expecting I'm, I'm expressing that I'm so and so, but you're not responding that way. But the reason you you're able to identify. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> so you would recognize it, but chances are they wouldn't because their mm-hmm. focus is something else. Right? And I understand their focus. Yes. Yes. They have a job to do mm-hmm. and they're trying to make sure that everybody's efficient. Right. You know. But right. And that does not, not excuse, that does not excuse just for the sake that psychosocial support is everyone. Mm-hmm. Everybody. As a matter of fact, a report, I think in 20, stated where almost 1 million Jamaicans out of the, are having challenges with mental and um, yep. personality disorders and mm-hmm. um, depression. I remember I started a foundation and the reason I started the foundation was to work with people like yourselves. I didn't mm-hmm. want to work with the lowest. I wanted to work with work needed. As a matter of fact, when I started the project, it was called a okay. year to have someone anonymous to talk to, to vent to. You could just say, this is what I'm feeling and know that you're being heard. Yes. Know that you're being heard. So Being heard. Very important. Being heard and your feelings mm-hmm. validated. Yes. They matter. understand that this is your you mm-hmm. matter right so it is important that i remember i was having a conversation with someone else since i asked was do you think that the pub should play a part in the selection of of um personnel for certain for for gov- who is selected to be a pub? should the, the the community that that principal play a role in ident or in selecting that person should teachers play a part in being that person is just for the Supreme Court? Right. Mm-hmm. I think a principal is just as important. As a matter of fact, yeah. it probably is more important because sometimes the failure of those in these positions that cause the person to end up in front of the Supreme <laughs> Right? So, something worth thinking about because what you've experienced, it could have ended mm-hmm. worse. You cracked. Oh my you God. <laughs> You could have become suicidal. You, oh could my have, you could have become a murderer. You could have hurt a kid. I, I know that you, and I could have been hurt. I could have been killed and as well. Have, exactly, exactly. So many times. So yes. it's God's grace. It's I'm telling you. Isn't it? it is. And also decisions you were making because we are, mm-hmm. right? Um, is being happy in your Yes. 1,000%. How so? Well, it makes me feel good. I'm tired of feeling sucky. <laughs> Sorry. I'm tired of feeling bad. Yes, yes. I reject it. Like, I reject it. And I, I rejected it so much in the past by being angry or walk away. Mm-hmm. I rejected it by being angry at the, the person or persons or situation. And then I said, all right, I don't want to be angry. I'm going to ignore you. You know, ignore the matter. Walk away from you. But no. You're making it I want it to, it to be where if you come at me, I'm like, you know what? You need help. Ah. <laughs> I see that you need some help. Yes. I'm going to stand right here and smile at you. Yes. <laughs> and you can give them some of the love that you weren't able to get. Yes. Tony Robbins says, uh-huh. love. And when we're able to recognize that, we can just love them. Even if we can't help them, we can love them. So that's a mm-hmm. good thing. So from teacher to paralegal, Mm-hmm. Yes. How is that journey going? Um, forward to? It's, it's good. It's a good journey. It's slow. I've slowed down. I've been going to school for a long time. I've been working straight, nonstop. Over 20 years, I think you had said, of, edu- of learning. Yes. Right? Wow. More, more than, more than that, because I'm in my uh-huh. 30s, late 30s. So, mm-hmm. From primary school, go all the way up to working. And I never took any break. Wow. <laughs> so I'm slowing down. It's the first time I'm, I'm actually not working or doing anything. From I was a baby, maybe. 
Me time. Besides on summer school, wow. you know, summer holidays or which is two months. Mm -hmm. So I am taking the time and I'm making sure that I'm doing the right thing. You're choosing. Yes. And I'm making sure I don't make any mistakes and make sure that it aligns with what God wants me to do because it makes no sense. It makes no sense because he kind of rewrote everything else in my life anyway. So if I don't do what he says, he's like, no, go back over there, stay right there <laughs> and go like that. that. Yes. <laughs> That's absolutely true. <laughs> so it makes no sense. I do anything else. Yes. yes. I, I feel at peace for you. <laughs> yes. As I knew you were, you know, worried about me. <laughs> yes, I was. And I, and said, I know that you had to get, yeah. I know that you needed time to process, mm -hmm. right? I have another question for you. You have had almost two decades and within mm -hmm. the education system. Yeah. About how many young people would you have? Thousands. Yeah. 17 years. Um, each year I have 14 classes or so. Wow. Um, 14 classes? Yeah. So it's like 40 odd kids in one class or 30 odd kids in one class. Yeah, thousands. <laughs> thousands. I, had, I yeah. never thought that. Every, every year <laughs> is like, that far. every year is, yeah, from, I teach RE for a long while, so it was 14, 13, 14 classes. Does our youth seem happy? You are right smack in the middle of, mm -hmm. smack in the, in your estimation, young people mm, are happy. No. No. Why would you say so? Because their children have lost their innocence a long time ago. I remember when I was their age, I was happy. I was boring, but I was happy. Compared to what they are doing now and what they have, they're seeing, what they know, what they're exposed to, it damages their, their, their innocence. They're, what are some they've of lost it. You've seen and then, your experience there. Pardon me? What are some of the encounters that are exposed to? You think have robbed them of their innocence? Poor parenting. Mm. Family is very important. It's, it's the background, the backbone of the society. And when you have parents who are struggling to maintain their own sanity, to provide for their, their children, struggling in their own way through life, and the children feel a brunt of, of the blunt of that pain from their parents, and they come to school and they show it to the other kids and the other teachers. So they're not happy. And imagine the oh my gosh. <laughs> I know, right? Psycho. The last job I left, I remember my dad had died. And a personal, one of my management, one of the person in my, was trying to get me to come back, but I was gone to a dark place, right? Because I'd lost my dad. People. Not true. But it also showed me the reality cold. of society. Society is so cold. That to be yours. For me, I mm. think we are so sensitized that it becomes, it's, it, we're no longer saying, oh, wow, did you just? Yeah, it's a, it's a tactic of an enemy. Yeah, it is. To desensitize people. people. Yes, to pain. Yeah, you should get used to it. Yes, get over it. Like, it's normal. Happens? People die every day. Yes. People get killed yes. every day. Get on with it. Yeah, move on. No, like, exactly. Mm -hmm. There was a time when we'd say that, like if you're watching TV, but it's, it's the one one contact and we're there. So that is mm -hmm. what our young... And it's worse for them because I'm a, being innocent of all those things. Mm -hmm. I had that phase, but they don't have that phase. Mm -hmm. maybe, they, it, maybe for them, their innocence was lost at three years old when they, when they saw somebody get shot on television. Wow. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. they're exposed to those things from early because their parents don't shield them until the correct age. Do they demonstrate this over quite a lot of thousand thousand? Mm -hmm. uh, do do you see where they de sorry they demonstrate clarity of mind as they seek to advance their education for or they, are they just going through the motions? They go through the motions of life. They go through the motions. Some you? some of them yes. the older students would know what they would want because they're older. But um it may change. It will change. Their desires may change, mm -hmm. but it is going through and their focus is to get the money. You know, what yes. can I get that's quick? How can I um, 
make money as quick without having to spend all his time at school. You know, right. that's my experience with the students that I have taught mostly. That they don't really understand why they're going to school and why it's so important to get any outside of the parameters of you need to get. Do they understand that coming to school means sharpening your skills, advancing any area that you. For the older students, fifth form, yes. The, the older students who are in the top classes will have that keen ability. The, the fast track classes from grade seven to 11, which is C stream, they would have that in them. So you have different, describe that for me, different kinds of classes? Yes, you have, yes. You have the faster students would be in a higher percentile of the shift. And what? Five, five, probably five or 10 percent because it's like you have C stream, you have C, the top, the, the top class is C stream and you have H, R, I, S afterwards. So they, they, they right. yes, because it's Christiana. Yes. So they spell oh. it out like that. Yeah. So those kids will know mm-hmm. that what they want and, wow. and they work towards it. H may known R, you may, may have it trickles down, you know. <laughs> wow. so, so C to T is supposed to be the top half, right? And A onwards, but you have persons who, who are in the lower stream who move up to the higher stream okay. and work, and you have persons who fall. So, yeah, right. Is there a system in the school, um, to really help? Not career coaching. They may have guidance and counseling. You may have social studies. May have a topic or so that would talk about career. Yeah, well, I teach. About, I mean, the, the whys and the why does it mm-hmm. the planning for the future like? They will have career expo days, okay, and projects like those where students will match their career. And you have from grade nine, they will have those things in in certain classes where they will know exactly which class they want to go into or which career they want to move to, towards. Where would you say the... <sighs> I'm going to hope for change. Um, where do you think change will happen. Well, not, if none should I, happen. It should happen right now or if it takes another... Crisis, maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, crisis, what... Where we are. Pardon? A, a, a more advanced crisis than where we are. Which is something that's very scary to even think about, mm. you know. Sometimes things. I'd be used to it, and it would, you know. Yeah. So sometimes you see it getting worse is not always a bad. Sometimes getting worse is causes it to, to and, mm-hmm. and, and become open, so we can. When you say yes, I. I, what do you mean? I don't want to um, go into American school system, but the day when we become like American school system and persons into the classroom and start shooting kids. That's to me, it's is, is, is awful. Wow, wow. With mental health issues, I always like fear that I don't want to be in a classroom. I always, you know, say, what happened? One of these days, somebody just walks up in here and does something like that at a breaking point. And so I don't want it to reach that, that, that at least that's what depth of crisis. Yeah. And what change would you like to see? What I'm seeing in me, what I see in you, what I see in other persons like us. And there are people like that. Mm-hmm. You see, because God has risen with people up there. He's been raising those persons up. So they're there. And so, like doctors, these persons have the solution to these issues, to social change. You know? So I'm not worried about it. What do you think? I understand what you mean when you say change needs to happen, but guess what? We had to go seek it. For example, I had to go do the work to make a choice that I remember I had, I was motivated by. I did not ask for help. I did not, um, didn't pray about it. I didn't ask God. To, I purposely was, that was me deciding. It's not happening again. So I'm going to, mm-hmm. I'm not going to run from this thing. I'm going to and then I'm going to choose. In coaching, we talk about motive. I decided I'm going to choose. To, I'm going to choose yes. to work because I'm happy. What would you say? Give me three things. These young people propel that change. Mm. They have to want it. That's the first thing. You have to desire the change. Yes. 
you have to be willing to commit to working on um, changing. And you have to seek help from other persons. You can't do it alone. Yes. And I want to underscore that last one. Seek mm -hmm. <laughs> seek help but are not willing to do the work. Willing to commit. Mm -hmm. Willing to commit. So those points that you really mm -hmm. point. um know that you know exactly where you're heading, what you um what are the steps you're taking with research. You know me, I like to research. <laughs> So I, I'm looking at different schools. I'm thinking, um, working and studying or studying alone. Mm -hmm. So I had to be thinking about that. So I'm still in a research phase yes. of it. And the next step was? an application on, on some, mm -hmm. but still researching. Okay. To apply and then go, choose a school. Yes. Find the resources. Are going to be online or are you going to go away? What's your I would love to go to school. Mm -hmm. I would love to go to school and sit in the classroom and be a student again because I like to learn. Uh -huh. But um, you have to think about finances and all that, right? Mm -hmm. You have to think about everything. Planning. Planning it planning, out. Planning. Yes. I understand. Oh, yeah. I'm at peace. I'm happy. Yeah. And I don't want it to be a happiness because I'm no longer in conflict. I wanted to transcend to that because I have to go back to work. So yeah. I want to bring that with me. And that's why I spend the time to soak in the happiness. If it's even to just sit down and enjoy a sweetie, you know, or whatever food I'm eating to actually taste that food. Wow. <laughs> Drink that water and feel the water going down inside of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Feel the water going in, flowing through your system. Yes, yes. So, so living in the now, that's just it. Yes. Living in the now, try not to worry about the future, because I used to worry a lot. So start worrying about the future. Live for today, live in the now. Mm -hmm. Experience what you're experiencing. Plan, trust God, hope, and he will take care of the rest. You're right. I remember me. Remember, remember who I was I do. I do. Um, last year. You're blocking yeah. now. How yes. How does it feel? Lighter. Wow. Yes. Lighter. And I'm more in touch with my emotions. You know, when you, you, know, when you, when you get emotional and then you don't want to cry. Yes. <laughs> you don't want to laugh out loud. Yes. But now I'm like, I'm oh going to cry. It's yes. healthy to cry. I want to laugh out loud at something. And yeah, that never stopped me before. Mm -hmm. But being in touch with my emotions and being able to express it in a healthy way is important to me. Awesome. No. What would you say to the person who says happiness is over? You're a cynic. A person's a cynic and a person's <laughs> believing the lies of the enemy. Mm -hmm. You know, because if you're God's child, God wants happiness for you. I don't believe in in, in person's view of being godly and you must suffer yes testings and trials come your way and you have to go through it but there are persons who just think that suffering is a badge of honor <laughs> that they will get a medal for it like if you suffer through this all the time you're gonna get a crown no <laughs> be happy want it <laughs> you know feel that um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes yes yes, yes. And happiness is not contingent on what you have or where you are in life or what you look like, you know? It's based off of you actually finding yourself in God, finding yourself in your purpose, you know, why you're here, and being okay with who you are. Your past your pre and your present. Forgiving yourself. Don't be too hard on yourself. Extending grace to yourself. And that's important because when you, when you extend grace to yourself, you can extend grace to other people. And that's something that I recently, like, yeah. You know? Because yeah. how people react, when how people, people react to other people harshly and unforgiving, is because you haven't forgiven yourself. 
Yes. When you're, quick to, when you're quick to throw the stone at the woman who committed adultery, yourself. it means that you haven't forgiven yourself in your sin. Yes. Yes. So that's important. You have to forgive yourself. You have to love yourself. You have to extend grace to yourself first. You can't love yourself. And you, 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 can't, you can't say you love people then and don't love yourself. Right. It's not the true love. Mm-hmm. It's not right. It's not right. Love you come first. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> As we close this interview, that they can do it. They can do anything that they want to do. Yes. You can do all things. The, the Philippians four thirteen. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You can do anything you want. <laughs> that is such an interesting quote. I usually ask persons who are clients that I have who are yes who declare they're Christian. I think I asked you too. Yes, we did. <laughs> How do you say? Yeah, because we were eating things. Yes, we're taught that it's road to learning. Yeah. You're taught that at church. It's here that Bible scripture all the time. Yeah, it's just something you know. Yeah, but you never really actually examine it, and yeah. well, I guess you have to go through things to actually know what that means. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Thank you. It was so lovely speaking with Kisha. Very interesting conversation, and I'm sure some of the things she spoke about, it's not unique to her. You listening to this podcast might have experienced one or two of the of what she spoke about, or some of the things she spoke about. I certainly have experienced some of them right and if you have if you need help or you would like some support or some guidelines or some some um idea as to how do i navigate my life and my career to make sure that at the end of the day i'm happy here are three questions three questions you must ask yourself one what is the purpose or mission of my life that must be expressed through my work you have to ask yourself that question what is the purpose or mission of your life that must be expressed through your work the second one is what values must be expressed in my work for optimal satisfaction Ask yourself, what values must be expressed in your work for you to achieve optimal satisfaction? And the third critical question is, what motivates me to do my absolute best? What really interests me? Ask yourself. What motivates you to do your absolute best? And what is it that really interests you? Those are crucial questions. Our problems will not be fixed in one smile, one moment of joy, or even in one conversation with a coach. Because of years of buildup, years of of, of doing things a certain way. However, we can begin to redesign our fate beginning with ourselves beginning with one thing beginning with one choice one decision a decision to be happiness to be happy a decision to choose to be happy if each individual begins if each of you begin to make changes in your own life this will result in major societal changes as well if if we if each of us begin to make the changes that would result in us being more content happy at peace in our lives this will result in a major societal change as well we must begin by changing the way we think this is what we call paradigms our paradigms are our perspectives on the things that happen in and around us from the most insignificant to the most critical and i'm going to share with you how myself as a career as a certified career coach or any career coach you choose can help you 
they can help you all right we can help you career coaches can help you design and discover our car we as career coaches can help you discover and design your career we can help you connect with the work you are passionate about that pays you we can also help you in successful with successful transition from one job to another from the job you don't like to the job you like let me change this here is how a career coach can help you whether the career coach is myself or someone else it doesn't matter seek help get it where you can we can help you to discover and design your career the career that works for you your ideal career we can help you connect with the work you are passionate about that pays we can help you with a successful transition from the job you don't like to the job you will like or to a job you will like and we can also help you harmonize your purpose with your current work life so if you like this does not mean that you have to change your job you don't have to change your job if you don't want to but you can if you want to right and remember as we come to a close if you have any questions comments or feedback please leave it in the comment section to join me in a conversation on finding happy contact us at www.certifiedcoach.co or on Facebook at certifiedcoach.co or Instagram at own.yourtruth. Thank you so much for listening and for spending time with, with us and for, for, for sharing in this conversation. Please comment. <laughs>